Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today, we need to take a trip over to the zoo, the music zoo. They've got two new custom order styles that I thought were cool enough that we need to feature them again. This video is not sponsored by Music Zoo. They just happen to be madmen over there, and they custom order a bunch of cool stuff. So our first one is described as a Gibson Custom Shop 1956 Les Paul Standard Gold Tapa, get this, with staple pickups. Let's take a look at this thing. When I saw this, instant love for double staples, man. You didn't even find that originally in the 50s. Just in case you're not familiar, when the custom was introduced in late 53, 54, this is what they looked like. They had this staple pickup in the neck position and then a regular P90 in the bridge. And they looked like this until about 1957 when they switched over to the triple PAF humbuckers. Jimmy Page style. And even before the custom, you could find these staple pickups in certain hollow bodied instruments, high end jazz arch tops, like this Super 400 CES. And it gets the name staple pickup because if you really zoom in here, you can kind of see what looks like a staple for the pull piece instead of what you're used to seeing on a P90, the screws that you can adjust. This is what these freaky things look like underneath it. They require extra deep routes for those. This is one of those pickups that you rarely ever see in anything. I would love to see Gibson introduce this back into like the Gibson USA products because they're just kind of interesting, even if it's just for the aesthetic of them. So today we have a custom shop made to measure gold top with two of them. Normally a Les Paul like this one, it would be like what a 1956 reissue back when they had P90s, but we have something a little bit more special than P90s on this. So it's kind of an interesting take on that. They decided to do black plastics, including your poker chip, but peculiarly enough, no pick guard. I kind of wish they would have put a pick guard on here, but at the same time, it's really boisterous without it. But as far as the hardware, this is a standard historic spec instrument, so we have the ABR-1 bridge and likely a lightweight aluminum tailpiece. From far away, the only thing that really pops out at you is the black against the gold body, and then you get the black on the headstock, but hey, get this. Kind of an aged yellow golden Gibson logo. So they've got some beautiful symmetry here. Main gold with a little bit of black, main black with a little bit of gold, including your tuner tips. The fretboard just appears to be a regular rosewood. Since this is kind of a crazy guitar anyways, I would have custom ordered this with an ebony fretboard. I don't know if I would have went as far as block inlays, but I think maybe a mother of pearl trapezoid just to really throw things off, make it a little bit more unique. Because when you get to the back, they kind of, I feel like they dropped the ball a little bit here. Maybe we could have gave it like a stinger on the back of the headstock. You know, something like this. Or maybe take it all the way back and give it like a multi-piece neck like some of these arch tops. And as far as the case goes, it looks like we're getting the more newer style Liptons that have a very distinctive pink hue. I'm honestly not a big fan, but what is this? That's the first time I'm seeing that. It looks like a giant cushion to help support the headstock maybe? I think I need to get a brand new Gibson in because things are changing. It looks like they have a slope down here as well. Kind of like those foam blocks that they used to use, but now they're permanent inserts in the case. I guess we'll have to look forward to that. But how much do they want for this custom ordered thing? 6199 bucks. Now, as far as brand new Gibsons go, this is not that bad of a price, but personally, I would have liked to have seen just a little bit more special to this one, like that ebony fretboard or something a little bit fancier on the back to make it so you need to buy this thing instead of just buying an R6 and putting staple pickups in it. So I rate the Zoo's custom order an eight out of 10. And hey, if gold tops aren't your thing, there's this one. I'm not sure I like this one as much. It's also selling for a premium $64.99 because they gave it a burst finish. Now I think if you're gonna go for a burst, wouldn't you want a flame top or something a little bit more unique? I mean, it looks like we get a little bit of figuring, so maybe it's just a beautiful plain top and the photos don't do it justice, but it looks like they opted for Grover tuners on this one. So if you prefer those over the Clusens, that'd be great. Personally, I trust Grovers to stay in tune better than Clusens, but I've always loved the look of the Cluson tuners much better. But the backside of this one's like more burst in fluence. So you get the red aniline dyes, and that's probably why it was a little bit more expensive through the Made to Measure program. But once again, no pick guard and double staple pickups. And it looks like these have the case cushion too. 
If nothing else, this gives you an idea of what you can do with the Gibson Made to Measure program. It's basically, you tell them what specs you want, they'll build the guitar if they ever open the program again. Last I had heard, they're accepting new orders, but nothing too crazy yet. So hopefully 2021 is our year for that. But for the second design of this episode, we need to travel back to the 70s and take a look at the Antigua finish. This is what it looks like. Love it or hate it, it's an interesting finish. When I think Antigua, I think the Antigua Stratocasters, but you can find some tellies. And this is what they look like. They don't have a super dark border to them, at least the ones that I like. Some of the reissues look a little bit goofy. Like this one, I feel like they make it a little bit too dark. But the original 70s ones generally look like this. Just a light border, and then they actually paint the pick guards. So if you were to pick through that, you can actually see the black underneath like somebody's done on this one. But these antique Wattellis were inspired by David Walters, who in a blitz of inspiration drew an idea for what became the colored Antigua finishes. Let's check these things out. So here it is, Fender Custom Shop 1967 Telecaster Antigua Fiesta Red, master built by Vincent Van Trite. I'm only covering this because I think it's unique and I haven't seen it before, not because I necessarily love it. In my opinion, I don't think these should actually be called Antigua, but if they wouldn't have called it Antigua Fiesta Red, I wouldn't even have paid these things any attention. Because I'm one of the goofballs that just happens to like the original Antiguas. So essentially, instead of that kind of dark grayish brownish border, they've colorized them. So this one, it's that Fiesta Red color, and they even went as far as doing it on the pick guard. But for some reason, I just feel it's a little bit too plain, especially for a master built. If you're going to pay the big money for a master built, I mean, we're talking 6,500 smackaroonies here, I would want something a little bit more special, like make them do the burst on the back of the neck, even though that's not something you see within Fender Terry too much. I feel they could have at least did a matching headstock, because it's just a, a plain grain neck. Maybe they could have uh, flamed it or something. But it is kind of an interesting color. Not necessarily my favorite, but I do love the fact that they included this little goofy thing. Their initial design of it that they sent to Fender and said, hey, make this. I've got to say, though, inside that case, it looks a little bit better. My rating for this one, 6 out of 10. It doesn't excite me too much. But now let's switch over to this one. We get Silver Antigua. Now this one, I've got to say, I'm going to give it about an 8.5 out of 10 because it pays more tribute to the original Antigua. You still kind of got that grayish color right here, a little bit puke greeny, but then you get a really vibrant silver color on the outside. So paying tribute to the original, but yet still doing something different. But I dig this one. I think they did a good job. And big props to Vincent for making that out of this because I can hardly even see the color difference. Yeah, I'm actually going to upgrade that one to a 9 out of 10 because that's almost perfect. Let's see what our next color is. Copper. Antigua Copper. When I think Antigua, I think the Old West Cowboys time for a showdown type thing. Copper kind of works. I don't think I like it quite as much as the silver, but I feel like this is one that in person it might win you over because this looks more like a cowboy boot now. So I think I will give this one the eight and a half score, but I truly believe if I were to be in the same room as all these other ones, it might be able to win me over. I mean, look at this. That looks pretty cool from that angle. I think they've done justice to put Antigua in the title of this one. But now for perhaps the most peculiar. I mean, let's go over these again. We had copper, we had silver, and we had Fiesta Red. This guy is blue. They call it Antigua Lake Placid Blue. It does nothing for me personally, but at the same time, it like transcends Antigua. It takes it as like the base idea, but makes it modernized. But it's kind of cool, icy very modern with the pin striping of the blue, but you could do that with just about any type of tally. But what is extra nice about this one being blue is it's one of the two popular chroma keying colors. So I can literally just by doing this, whoosh, turn this into 
any color that I would want. I mean, if we wanted a green, if we wanted a black one, let's say we want a really bright yellow, we could just have regular Antigua. We could make it any color of the rainbow just with this little fancy editing trick. And I want you to let me know down in the comment section what color you would like one of these in. But this thing, you know, it looks pretty cool within that case as well. I would probably give this design a seven out of 10. It's not something that I would personally purchase, but I'm glad that they chose a blue or a green one. So here's my final thoughts on these things. 6,500 bucks, you're going to be paying master built specs because of how it was built in the USA by a very fine craftsman. So it's not for everybody and it's definitely not something I would consider purchasing. However, I think this idea would work really, really well for like a made in Japan limited edition, like they do 200 of each color. Maybe made in America if they limited it a little bit more, but I think people would dig these things for about 1500 bucks if they could find a way to make it that price point. Or maybe even made in Mexico, but like actually give it decent pickups and electronics. I think the Music Zoo and Fender might be onto something there, but I guess we'll have to check the comments of this video to see if people even like this. Because I can't imagine too many people are going to want to pay 6500 bucks. but if it became a little bit cheaper, this is the revival that I think Antigua needs without being full-on Antigua. The only question left, would you rock a colored Antigua telly or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.